The Life and Time, sponsored by Decton Mantons, the Well Mort County Westmeat. Premier country music dancing venue in the Midlands, featuring top bands weekly. Here's to you. Hello and you're very welcome to the life and times of one of Ireland's top country superstars, one of the greatest of them all, Tia Dallas. Tia Dallas, you're very welcome to the show. Thank you. Where did it all begin for you? Tell well, us back to where I you were born. I suppose it all began back for me in Mount Temple in County Westmeath all those many, many years ago and uh, grew up there with the, on the family farm with my brothers and sisters and my father and mother and uh, that's where it all started really. There's no truth in the rumour that you went to school in your bare feet, is there? <laughs> no, no, uh, I didn't go to school that much even, never mind me bare feet. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Who, uh, what is your earliest, uh, what would be your favourite childhood memory? Well, I suppose really uh, some of my favourite childhood memories was growing up uh, in Mount Temple and, uh, you know, football and, and uh, being involved in the local community and all that type of thing, you know. And when that time, uh, growing up, you know, in the school, you'd be in the choir, and they were very happy times, really were. Because Tom Allen is your original name, your stage name being Tia Dallas. You are very come from a very musical family. Yeah, I was born and christened Tom Allen back and uh, those years ago. And uh, then uh, when it all happened in 1980, when I recorded the song Who Shot JR, written by a man from Cork by the name of Rocky Stone. And uh, that changed everything. Changed my name, changed my lifestyle, and changed my bank account. <laughs> and, and became very famous. <laughs> yeah. Of course, your other. I suppose uh, you could say that. Your brothers, of course, are very popular in the music business also. One of them, namely, being Tony Allen. Yeah, Tony is the Allen half of Foster and Allen. Well, we kind of grew up with music. You know, my father played fiddle, my mother was a, quite a good singer. And, uh, you know, talk about the, the, the childhood memories. Some of that was traditional music sessions at home in our house and my oldest brother Mick who uh, he he played Ellen Pipes and he played accordion and then my other brother Pat he plays fiddle and plays accordion Jack who was with the band called Alan Dale for a number of years and recorded uh, Sarah Jane that song Sarah Jane and the Greenfields of Ireland and they were quite a good band back in the 80s as well and uh, that's where it would all have started you know the, the, the music sessions in our, in our house. TR, who was, would be your influences as you grew up and during your childhood as such? Who would have been your uh, well, biggest influences there? I suppose my parents would have been big influences to me. I was lucky to be born into a, a very good family. I had great parents, you know, hard-working people. My father worked on the council and he also had a small farm. And that was, my parents would have been hugely influenced on me, yeah. <laughs> my memory and I'll tell you of times long ago when we walked to school summer and winter barefoot through the fields we would go I remember our little tat cottage and the half door led into the hall the crane or the fire in the kitchen and the grandfather clock on the wall out it was cured with the poker and putting the secure the flu. The bacon it hung from the ceiling. Sure, the story I tell you is true. We went to church every Sunday, and grandfather wore his best hat. The preacher he spoke from the altar. And all the women in different seats sat Matchmaking was part of tradition And the rambling house filled up at night When the tailor he told the ghost stories All the children that shiver with fright This doubt it was cured with the poker And put ye the set cured the flu Taking it home from the ceiling 
from the sea. Sure, the story I tell you is true. Sound of the amber and the burning horse hoof we could smell when we passed the forge door in the evening with the water we fetched from the well. We spun till the cows before milking, tied the horse to the wall through the shoe. His collar and hames, the winkers and reins and the harness. We kept them like new. The stout it was cured with the poker, and Pudgeen the said cured the flu. The bacon it hung from the ceiling. Sure, the story I tell you is true. For miles to the fair in the darkness, with our animals we walk with delight. When the wheeling and dealing was over, everyone waited on for the fight. Now I hope in telling this story, I haven't detained you too long. For there's so much more I must tell you someday in some other song. The stout it was cured with the poker. And Pudgeen, the said, cured the flu. The bacon it hung from the ceiling. Sure, the story I'll tell you is true. Sure, that story I've told you is. true. What was your favourite TV show as you grew up? Oh, the first te uh, television show I can ever remember seeing uh, was in the in the village, the local pub in the village. That was the first television I seen, and I think uh, there was a thing on called Rin Tin Tin, and uh, that was one of the the first television shows I ever remember seeing. Right, and tell me, Tiara, who inspired you to become an entertainer? Well, I suppose my you know growing up in a house where there was lots of music. Uh, music was something I was very, very much into as a young fella and uh, was singing from a very young age. You know, there would be parties at home in the house, you know, people would come, maybe home from England or whatever, and we would be singing and playing music in the house. But then, as time went on, I suppose, uh, the first country record bought would have been Charlie Pride. Right. And in Ireland then, you know, Big Tom was one of the, you know, Larry Cunningham, the late Doc Carroll, of course, who I, I, I had the pleasure of working with. Then Ray Lynham would be one of my favourite real country, Irish country singers, you know. Right. And tell me, how did you first get into the music business? Well, I first got into country music by... Uh, actually, I, when I was a very young lad, I was working in Moat, and Ray Lynham and Kevin Sheeran, who went on to be the Hillbillies, they had a little band called the Merrymen. I remember going and singing with them once or twice. And from there on, there was a local band called the Marylanders. And, you know, I said, Tony, my brother, we were all always messing around with music and a few local fellas. And went on from there. And uh, I suppose that would have been kind of where it all started. I always wanted to be in music. Right, right. But you were working at that stage also, uh, during the day? I started working and served my time as a motor mechanic, which I, I did for a number of years, yeah. Right. And uh, even during that time, that's when we would have been at the music as well. You right, know? right. And tell me, how did you uh, get involved with the mainlanders? Uh, when B. Tom left the mainlanders, you fronted the mainlanders for a while. How did you get that uh, job? Well, you see, I first met the mainlanders when I was a young fella and picking bottles in the marquee and cleaning up. And the lads came and, you know, they'd come early and set up the gear. And I think they might have been rehearsing or something. And I was very much taken in by, by these guys, you know. And uh, that would have been my first 
uh, thing that you know we got them lads and of course then Joe Dolan and I lived up the road for me and uh, you know I remember going to see Joe and the Roseland Ballroom was in Moat right and that was where all the big bands came to you know and the, the wagons and the big cars and yeah, you know yeah. this was very much influenced by all this as well yeah. you know and what was it like fronting the mainliners well the mainliners I joined the mainliners in 78 and that was a that was a big step for me. I, I had been in a couple of other bands before that, but they were the they were you know the biggest name in country music in Ireland. Yeah. And uh, I was only with them for a short time, and then I, I was see I was living in the Midlands, and they were based in Monaghan, so there was a bit of a bit of a distance. And I was I was now married and and had a, I think we might have one child at the time. You right. Know. And T.R. What was, what was the name of the band you were with before the Mainliners? Well, I first started out playing in a band called the Fine Havens, right. Castle Blaney, and uh, as uh, and then I went on. Tony and I, and a couple of the other lads had a band uh, which became the Night Runners, and Doc Carr joined us. Right, and that was a very, very successful band in the early seventies. Then Tony and Mick Foster, who went on to become Foster and Allen, uh, they went and did their own thing, and I went with another local uh, band called the Sailors. Right, and. Um, then I became with the main owners and then we continued on from there. Paddy Murray and Tom Buster never had their names in light. But they must be the biggest fans of the famous Tom McBride. They never missed the gentle joint from Cork to Donegal. Paddy says the big fella is the greatest of them all. Tom hails from Shannon Golden and Paddy from West Clare. And they say that miles don't mean a thing as they travel everywhere. They talk about their hero as the stereo loudly rings. And need I say, with these boys play, it is big Tom. I remember meeting Paddy on a cold December day And I mentioned that the weatherman said snow was on the way But Paddy only smiled and said, whatever the weather brings I'm off to Castle Blaney now, I'm going to see the king Tom Hales from Shannagold and Paddy from West Clare and they say that miles don't mean a thing as they travel everywhere. They talk about their hero as the stereo loudly rings. And need I say, with these boys play, it is Big Tom the King. The mainliner just love to see those fellas. Coming round, Tom Buston says it lifts his heart to hear that magic sound. So keep the wheels a turning, boys, and keep it country as you move along to hear Big Tom wherever he may be. Tom hails from Shannon and Paddy from West Clare, and they say that miles don't mean a thing as they travel everywhere. They talk about their hero as the stereo loudly rings. And need I say, with these boys play, it is Big Tom the King. They talk about their hero as the stereo loudly rings. And need I say, with these boys play, it is Big Tom the King. The Life and Time, sponsored by Declan Mantons, the Well Moat County Westmead. Premier country music dancing venue in the Midlands, featuring top bands weekly. And TR, how did you become, you mentioned it briefly, you became TR Dallas when you, uh, when you had a huge hit uh, about Larry Hagman and uh, so on. So how did that become, actually come about? Well, after I leave the mainliners, I was, uh, went to work with a gentleman called Tony Cassidy, who will be very well known in, in, in the country, in the music business and also in the world of politics. 
and uh, and we were working with Donny in the office in Dublin. He, at the time, he was looking after Foster and Alan, and he was looking after different bands, you know. And uh, so we were there in the office, and this tape came in, and it was all about who shot Jr. And this was absolutely, you know, so topical at the time because Jr. had been shot. And that's what that's how that came about. We recorded the song on a Sunday. We did the late late on the following weekend, and the rest is history. And the rest is history. Yeah, T.R. What is your most treasured possession? God, I, I've had quite a few things, you know, different awards that we've got over the years. But I suppose the one thing that uh, I, I have and I still have that was would be, you know, very famous is Larry Hagman's hat. Right. You met Larry Hagman, of course. I met Larry, yeah, twice, I think, in, in, in the early days. And, uh, you know, I used to have the hat, and it's the bus with the hat that he was wearing on the night that he got shot. You right. Know? So that's a... That would be your most uh, well, one, my, right. one of the most. One, one, one of my most yeah, yeah. possessions, yeah. And tell me, what would have been the highlight of your career to date? I know you've had many, many highlights down through the years. Well, before. yeah, the one, of the first, one of the first highlights of my career would have been the first time I recorded, uh, or the first time I went on television, and uh, did the Late Late, which was, really launched me. But the real big uh, thing was uh, when I toured with Johnny Cash. Mm. That was an absolute tremendous experience. Right. And he was, you know, kind of one of my heroes as well as everything else. Right. Tell me, what gives you more satisfaction in life? Well, I really love, I really love doing what I do, like playing music. And, you know, it's the one thing, you know, even. No matter what else I'd be doing in life and no matter how tired I'd be, you know, once I get up on the stage and the, the music starts and the people are enjoying themselves, the buzz is on and that's yeah, it, you know. Yeah, yeah. South of the border, down Mexico. That's where I fell in love, where stars above came out to play. And now as I wander, my thoughts ever stray. South of the border, down Mexico way. She was a picture. In old Spanish lane Just for a tender while I kissed the smile upon her face For it was a fiesta And love had its day South of the border Down Mexico way And I lied and I whispered mañana For our tomorrow never came South of the border I rode back one day There in a veil By candlelight She knelt the mission bells told me that I shouldn't stray south of the border, down Mexico way. T. 
Tia Dallas, what has been the most embarrassing moment of your career to date, or even maybe outside of your career? Can you remember? I can't remember anything very embarrassing as such. You know, the, the worst thing that I think happened to me maybe once is, is forgetting the words of the song, you know, doing a, doing a live show and forgetting the words. But, you know, it, it is embarrassing at the time, but it's something that, you know, you, when you're a music entertainer and you're a professional, probably nobody knows any of yourself. Right, you know? right, right. The right. lads in the band would notice and they'd remember, remind you for some time after that. You yeah, know? yeah. Of course, you're front of the great band, uh, you know, T.R. Dallas band was a huge band. Well, the band around. was, yeah, it was a huge success for me at the yeah. time, you know, like we had, a, I can't think we were the only band that kind of survived from 1980 until 86 when Daniel O'Donnell started mm -hmm. around that time. And uh, but we had, you know, we had a great, we had a great career. And I still have, thank God. Yeah, you know? And playing to venues with two and three thousand people and and practically five, six nights a week. Well, yeah, I mean, everywhere, you know, if you hadn't a thousand or twelve hundred or fifteen hundred people, you definitely wouldn't be brought back. You know, yeah. like I remember being playing in Castle Bar and the Royal Ballroom. You know, it must be around the time when who shot Jr. and things was happening and. Uh, my manager at the time, the late Connie Lee, who was one of my great friends as well as a great manager, uh, you know, was saying to me that the man in the hall was saying that the crowds were dropping off a little bit, you know. Mm. I think we only had 2,300, and where that was one of the biggest ballrooms in the country. And uh, it still has a fabulous theatre there now. Then, Absolutely, yeah. TR, what are the three things you cannot live without? I suppose you can't live without air anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, and food and, and, and water. <laughs> but apart from that, uh, I, I just, uh, I think one of the things that I, I love is, is meeting people. You know, I love, you know, meeting people. And uh, it's one of the things that, you know, if you weren't, if I wasn't out there meeting the people, God, I think I would die, you know. Right, be, right, right, right. But after that, uh, uh, you know, yeah. I'm afraid uh, food is one of the things that I love. Unfortunately, I love it too much, and I, I'm not a big drinker. I like a social drink, and uh, that's basically what, the way I go. You know. Yeah. Can you remember the first time you heard yourself on radio, and if so, where were you? What was the sound? Well, the first time actually I recorded for radio was a gentleman called Donald K. O'Boyle in Donegal, and he's he's still to the good, thank God. And uh, uh, he brought me, he brought the band, it was with called The Fine Avens, that was in 1970. And we played in a little, little hall, and then it was in, I think it was Bun Beg uh, in Donegal. That was the first, the first song I actually recorded on, uh, on vinyl was with The Fine Avens as well. It was, I think it was Hank Snow, and maybe, maybe not sure, but Hank Snow or George Jones, some of the American stars. It was called The Stranger's Me. Right. Uh, that was the first song. I what year was that? 1970. Right. Yeah. I was in short trousers then. Yeah, you were a young man then. <laughs> Tell me, do you have a favourite song you have actually recorded? Our songs? Ah, sure, I'd have, have, a, I'd have a few, I suppose. Hard to be humble is one of, one of my favourites. Um, the story I'll tell you is true, is, is, is another one. There would be so many of them, really. Daddy's uh, Girl, I suppose, would be? Daddy's Girl, yes. Yeah, very, very popular song. Mm. One that's every night. Uh, JR as well. I mean, yeah, every night you go out, you, you've been doing these songs for 30 years, and the night you don't do them, someone comes and says, Ah, oh, I was waiting all night, and you never did JR, you never did. Yeah. There's one song that I recorded, it's a Dolly Parton song, I think it's Dolly Parton wrote it, called The Last One to Touch Me. And it's it's an amazing song, you know, every, yeah. every other night you'd be asked for it as well. And what would be your all time favourite country song um, by any singer? That's a great question, Who? Um, very hard to, very hard to say. Um, I, I, I suppose Hard To Be Humble would be one of my all-time favourite songs. Right. It's just a never-lasting song. And the one thing that's amazing about it is, you know, to this day, when you start singing that, especially in concert, mm. everybody in the hall seems to know it. No and even it. young people. Yeah. I seem to, to know the song, you know. Right. The Life and Time, sponsored by Declan Mantons, the well Moat County Westmeath, premier country music dancing venue in the Midlands, featuring top bands weekly. If you had a choice of recording with an artist, either living or dead, and who would that be? 
there'd be a few. Um, I suppose Dolly Parton is somebody who I think is just a tremendous great singer as well as a songwriter. Right. And to do a duet, like she'd be the one. Would she be? I think so, yeah. I met her twice in my life and she's a, she's a very, very talented and very, you know, very jollyful kind of a person, you know, and she's just, I mean, she's, she's got a great voice. If you weren't a country star, TR, um, what career would you have taken up? Well, uh, I suppose he was started out, served me time as a motor mechanic, and uh, I just had my time served when I became a, a sales rep. Right. And I went on to spend most of my time selling cars. And uh, I suppose if I wasn't singing, if I hadn't gone from, from selling cars into the music business, I'd still be selling cars. In fact, if anybody wants one, I'd always get one for them, even still. <laughs> but of course, to you, you also spent a bit of time as a politician. You were elected a number of times. I was, to the yeah. Senate, I was, I was, to the, the um, local council. Local yeah. council. Westmead County. I was a member of Westmead County Council for 15 years. Yeah, three, three occasions I got elected to the, to the council. I have a great love for politics, I really do as well, you know, it's, it's a bit of a, you know, it's something when you get involved, it's something you really get tied up in and there's a great bit of banter among politicians, you know, you'd, you'd have arguments with people and all that, but there's a great relationship with them as well and mm. uh, I think, you know, politicians get, a, you know, they get run down a lot about what they do or maybe what they don't do. But it's, it's a terrible, it's a terrible job, absolutely terrible. But, but you just get caught up in it and it's very hard to get away from it. You, know? you were able to, to combine both singing and the... Well, I did, I suppose, in both occasions you're, you're involved with people. Mm. And, uh, you know, yes, I was well able to combine the, both and, and enjoy both a lot. But uh, now in latter years, uh, politics is a tough game. And I mean, you know, there was a time that you say you're only as good as your last job, but this... Mm. this in politics are only as good as the next job. What made you go crazy, Billy Paul? Was it through love or too much alcohol? Was your back all the way against the wall? What made you go crazy, Billy Paul? You were my friend for nearly 20 years. You love my dirty jokes and ice cold beer. Tonight my eyes are filling up with tears. Cause I'll never be the same without you here. When your picture came across the evening news, Said they found a woman dead up in your room I hit my knees and prayed it wasn't true Man, it kills me when I found out it was you What made you go crazy, Billy Paul? Was it true love or too much alcohol? Was your back all the way against the wall? What made you go crazy, Billy Paul? Now I've seen you at your best and now you're worse best of you is what I'll remember first We'll read your mama's favorite Bible verse Then watch you right away in that old hearse Well, I knew you were ashamed of what you'd done The only choice you thought you had was just to run Pride always gets the best of everyone True forgiveness lies with the Father and the Son What made you go crazy, Billy Paul? Did you think you couldn't face those prison walls? Why did you have to go and end it all? What 
made you go crazy, Billy Paul? What made you go crazy, Billy Paul? Was it through love or too much alcohol? Was your back all the way against the wall? What made you go crazy, Billy Paul? What made you go crazy? What one piece of advice um, had you been, have you been given that you actually followed down through your career and your life? Well, the one thing about it when I grew up, you know, my parents would always say to you, look at, be nice to people, be honest and be straight. And if you can't do someone a good turn, don't do them a bad one. You know, I remember my father one time, I, I was giving out about something and, and he said to me, don't be going on like that now. He says, it's nice to be nice and there's no weight to carry, he said, you know. Right. And it's, 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 it's a very true saying because, you know, you might have a disagreement with someone today, but your next week they could do you a great favor. Right. So uh, I'm a great believer in, in, in whatever, whatever happens, just leave it behind you. Say what you have to say and get on with and life. And move on, yeah, yeah, yeah. What piece of advice would you give to new artists starting off in the business? Well, First of all, in you starting off in the music business, it's a tough game. You have to work hard at it and you have to listen to people who has been there before you and uh, get a couple of opinions. If you're only young and you're starting out, if you want to pick a song, get a couple of opinions, sing it for a while, see do you like the song, mm. get used to the song, see can you sing it. See, it's not everybody can sing every song. The songs I couldn't sing, there's, you know, the certain songs that suit you better than others. The whole secret is pick a song that suits you, song with a story, and just work hard at it. Be nice to the people you're working for and you're working with, and most of all, be the people on the floor who's paying your wages. Yes, true, true. You know, because they're the ones who come back night after night, mm -hmm. and it's it's very important to appreciate them because they they are the they are wonderful people. I suppose a good stage name is very important too. I mean, T.R. Dallas is a very catchy, a very, very good Well, it worked out well at the time. You know, when the when we brought out the song, Who Shot J.R., and we took it, when he came out in England, the record company there, you know, thought that Tom Allen was a, a bit Irish, you know, and there was Foster and Allen, and there was Dave Allen, and there was different Allens. And they just thought that the song, Who Shot J.R., was kind of very American, and and the, the T.R. kind of fitted in, and. Uh, Donny Cassidy at the time, they came up with, with, with Dallas. And right. I wasn't that impressed at the time, but look, it worked out very well. It worked out end, very well. TR, tell us about your latest recording project. I know you have many albums to your credit, many hits to your credit. Yeah. Tell us about your latest project. Well, you know, the latest, the latest is, a, is, a, is a new DVD that I've been just, just have finished and hope to get it out quite soon. I'm always trying to, to pick songs and in fairness, I'm lucky, you know, I get some nice original songs sent to me. And like what we're saying about new artists getting songs, you will get loads of songs sent to you. But then they may not suit me, they could suit somebody else. But they may not, and I may not like it, and I could be totally wrong. But you have to like the song. And how do you pick a song? Do you just sit down, listen to a song? And, well, and how uh, do you actually pick a song and say, that's a song, I'll go for a single well, or I, an album? I, I like a song with a story to it. And the uh, story is very important, nice melody, melody, mm. melody. and uh, you know, uh, the words of the song is, is, is important. And it, sometimes, you know, often you record a song, like I've recorded some songs, not a lot, but some that I never brought out because it just it didn't, after doing them and all, they just weren't right, you know, right. for whatever reason. And you've written a few of them yourself? Ah, yeah, I wouldn't be a songwriter though, so I've written a few songs. I've written one that's on Foster and Allen have it on their last album called The Land That I Love. Right. Uh, Louise Morrissey put it on one of her albums a while back, but uh, yeah. And you, you, you wrote one, didn't you, Up Mayo, a famous Mayo song uh, for the other yeah, one time? Many years ago. I did, yeah, I wrote a few bits of ones. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, TR, you just said about how you pick um, a song um, for an album. How have things changed? in recent times, recording-wise, compared to what they were like going back, say, 20, oh, 30 years there's ago? there's no comparison. Absolutely no comparison. The whole world of recording. When I recorded the first song in 1970, 
It was in the Airman Andrews Studios in Dublin. And you were just, actually they used it as a dance hall at night time. And it was a recording studio during the day. So there was just these battens put up round about. You went out there and you sang your song. There was a little eight track studio, I think it was inside. And you know, the multi recorded different bits and pieces. I don't know that much about recording, but that's the way it was done. Then we moved on a bit, you know, and uh, when I recorded Who Shot JR and songs like that, we did it in Lombard Street in Dublin. And that was a master studio. But I mean, the quality of sound is out there today. Just the technology is incredible. Yeah. I mean, I can go to the studio and put down a, a guide vocal. They can send one piece to, to Nashville and they can send another piece to, to somewhere in Canada and they send another piece to somewhere in Australia and people will pay the parts and they just email the whole lot back and you go back in and then mix it all down and you sing or put the vocal on it. It's just a different world. The quality uh, of recording has changed so much and the, the quality of musician has really changed an awful lot. Like most young young artists now who are playing music, should they nearly know how the instrument is built before yeah, they start learning how yeah, to play yeah. it. You know? You're just speaking about Nashville there. You've been to Nashville, of course, several times. Can you ah, yeah, I love Nashville. It's, it's a grand place. It's, it's very laid back. And there again, look, it has changed tremendously. When I were first went in 1980 and 81, and then, you know, you go back 20 years later, it's a whole different world. And this quality, the standard of the music has changed a lot, and the type of music, they've moved on a kind of from what I would call the old traditional music into the more modern country music. And uh, I don't know, sometimes it has worked out good, and I still like the, the older traditional country music, you know. Wow. And I think we've come back to that now a bit, you know. Yeah. Here in Ireland, sure, I mean, the, you know, the standard of some of the young country singers that's coming through here is just... Tremendous, fantastic to see it, brilliant. Of course, country music in Ireland is very, very strong at the moment. It has been for the last number of years. It like has, yeah, but and Derek it, Ryan and all those Absolutely. Singers. I mean, when you look at, just, you know, you name a few people like Nathan Carter and Lisa McHugh and Derek Ryan and uh, Lee Matthews and Jim Devine and Johnny Brady and all these young singers that's coming through. I can't even think of most of them. But you take Derek Ryan as a talent. I mean, some of the songs he's written mm. are just... They blow you away. I mean, as good as any place, any man in the world, like just fantastic. But they're, they're, they're good, as I said again, they're all entertainers. You see, it's wanting to be a singer and you can be a great singer and there's some great singers out there who never ever makes it. But it's not just about singing. You have to be an entertainer. You have to be able to sell it to the people. And that's, that is the big one. Right, right. The Life and Time, sponsored by Declan Mantons, the well Mort County Westmead. Premier country music dancing venue in the Midlands, featuring top bands weekly. Now when I was a lad in a fishing town, an old man said to me, You can spend your life, your jolly life, a sailing on the sea. You can search the world for pretty girls Till your eyes grow weak and dim But don't go swimming with the mermaid son If you don't know how to swim Cause her hair is green as seaweed And her skin is blue and pale And I'll tell you now before you start you love that girl with all your heart You're only gonna love the upper part You're not gonna like the tail so I signed up with the whaling ship And the very first day of sea I spied a mermaid in the waves Reaching out to me Come live with me in the sea, says she And down on the ocean floor I'll show you a million wondrous things You've never seen before And her hair was green as seaweed And her skin was blue and pale And her face, it was a work of art I love that girl with all my heart I only love the upper part, I did not like the tail. So I jumped in and she pulled me down, down to her seaweed bed. And a pillow made of tortoise shells, she placed beneath my head. She fed me shrimps and caviar upon a silver dish. From her head to her waist, she was just my taste, the rest of her was a fish. And her hair was green as seaweed, and her skin was blue and pale, and her face it was a work of art. I love that girl with all my heart, I only love the upper part, 
I did not like the tale. And then one day she swam away and sang to the shrimps and the whales. I miss her fin and her seaweed hair and the silvery shine of her scales. But then her sister, she swam by and set my heart to whirl. Cause the upper part was an ugly fish and the bottom part was a girl. And her toes were pink and rosy and her knees were smooth and pale. And her legs, they are a work of art. I love that girl with all my heart. I don't give a damn about the upper part. And that's how I end my tale. And T.R., what is your favourite colour? The maroon and white of Westmead is still one of my favourites. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Fair play. And your favourite item of clothing, how would that be? I like a suit. Yeah. If I'm going out, you know, I like to dress in, in, in nice, maybe a nice suit. If I, if, whenever I get the opportunity of going out, I don't get out much. Right. <laughs> and T.R., away from the music business and when you're not on stage or when you're not performing and travelling, what are your hobbies? I like listening to music, uh, you know. I like if, if I'm at home and I go out there into the sitting room, put on the television and put on a nice DVD or either that, sit back and listen to good country song on the stereo or whatever. I love music is my favourite pastime. And tell me, have you a particular goal going forward that you would like to achieve? Oh, so maybe a job like yours presenting a television show would be something, <laughs> I, I, something I, haven't, I haven't done really, you know. I, I, but yes. uh, something like that would be nice, yeah. I have done radio a bit down through the years, but, um, you know, I suppose when I stop and think, there's not much in my life I haven't done at this stage, you know. Waking up somebody with no money in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's any fear in that in the short term anyway. I don't know about that now. <laughs> Go, going back there too, to many years ago, you were in the pub business for a while. You had a very successful um, pub yeah, and, in Moat. Well, and we still have. My son has, has, has a very successful pub, thank God, in Moat, in County West Media, yeah. in the, cent the real capital of Ireland, the centre. But um, yeah, I bought my first pub back in 1988 and... Uh, Kind of been in and out of it ever since, you know. And but it's a tough game now too. Like it's 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 really a young man's game, you know. And it's it has changed. The world of having a pub has changed so much, you know. People now expect an awful lot more than just. I mean, I was just in his pub the other night, and I couldn't believe when I stopped and studied all the different types of drink, the different types of beers, mm. and the different. Uh, types of spirits and all the different, uh, you know, things that people ask for nowadays. Yeah, yeah. It's a different world. Different the game. Is a different world. Yeah. TR, you're hugely successful and continues to be hugely successful, both here in Ireland and across the water, both in the UK and indeed in the USA. What do you put that down to? Well, I suppose I've been lucky in, 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 in life, you that I've had hit records. And, you know, and only in the last five years, you know, I came along with that song, The Story I'll Tell You Is True, which has been around for a while, but it just was tremendous successful for me, especially in the UK, in Scotland, and in America. And the, the amazing thing, and I've recorded a lot over the years, that particular song, you know, I was playing up in Cavan one night, and, and this car pulled up outside, and uh, a child ran in and said, Will you come out to, for my mother wants you, my mother wants you for it for a minute? And I went, didn't know was you have to park in the car in a gateway or whatever. And I went out and she was looking for six records of the story I'll tell you it's true. And I just said to her, have you shop? <laughs> Once she said, no, I don't have a shop, no. But she said, but I have a brother in England and I have a sister in Canada and somebody else somewhere else. And she was sending this. A copy to each. Reminded her so much of where they grew up, how they grew up, and like I said about the story to the song was just amazing, you know. Yeah. And TR, when you go on holiday away from the music business, what is your favourite holiday destination? I think one of my favourites is Lanzarote, believe it or not, uh, Porto del Carmen. It's just, you know, we go kind of after Christmas and it's a time when it's nice and warm there. I like a little bit of sunshine. don't like it too hot. And it's it's very friendly, and you meet an awful lot of people from England and Ireland and Scotland, and you know who 
you can have a conversation with. They don't know what you're saying, and you what they're what they're saying. And uh, it's you know, there's music. There's lots of music in it as well. But I mean, you know, I've been to Canada and I've been to a whole lot of different places, and they're all nice. You know, holiday really is what you make it yourself too. You know, right, right. You go, you get the right company, and you go with the right people, and that's what it's all about. You know. And finally, Tia Dallas, what message would you have for your fans? Well, first of all, I want to say to my fans, I have a very loyal fan base there for years and years and years. And, you know, they're like family, really. You know, I go to England and go to wherever I go to America, and these people seem to come, you know, every other night. And the same here in Ireland, no matter what county I go to. And they come out and they support, has supported me. I just want to say how grateful I am and how thankful I am to them for what they've given me over all those years. They've absolutely been tremendous people. Not alone, they're not just fans, they're just friends as well as that. And I want to thank them for what they've done for me. To all our people in, in, you know, who, like yourself, on radio and television, without you people and without exposure, you cannot make it. You have to get the radio play, you have to get the television shows, and you have to have a fan base. It's the people, you know, Brian Call sang the song, it takes people like you to make people like me, and it's the people on the floor or in the, in the theatre, who they, I want to say how grateful I am and how thankful I am. Well, Tia Dallas, continued success to you, and thank you so much for taking the time to join us on the show this week, and I'm sure we'll be talking to you again in the not too distant future. Well, hopefully, Hugh, and thanks very much to you and everybody involved in your television show and what you've been doing for, for us now in the music business. Like, you have a tremendous, successful uh, program here with Hot Country and it's been that way for a number of years now and it's, it's good for us and it's good for the business. Tia Dallas, thank you very much indeed. Thanks very much indeed Hugh, thank you. He was a man and a friend always He stuck with me in the bad old days He didn't care If I had no dough We'd ramble on In the rain and snow Here's to you My rambling boy May all your rambling Bring you joy Here's to you chance to spread We thought we'd try to work one day The boss said he had room for one Said my old pal We'd rather bump Here's to you He got the chills and he got them back They took the only friend I had Here's to you When we die, we go somewhere. I bet you a dollar he's rambling there. 
Here's to you.